is at the land trust for for a long time I, i've been there's been a conversation about how we can get uh, more citizen science involved in our preserves and in our easements and on the lands that we manage and i'm very excited to listen and study iNaturalists and work because i think it's a, a wonderful tool for people to be able to go out to our properties but to other places as well and just document the natural wonder of our communities and ideally begin to build a, a library or a database of of what we have and what we can monitor and, 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 and enjoy over time. Um, so for the land trust, this, this may become a tool and many land trusts have used it to really build a collection of information about very specific places that we care about. So whether it's Beach Hill and it's all of the different plant species that are in the fields or Fernald's Neck and what's going on in the forest or Bald Mountain and the rare species on top. Um, I, I like the idea that particularly in these times when we can't all get together, we can give people a tool like this and maybe even high school kids in the fall uh, or in the summer when they've got less to do and go out and, and gather data that, that we can all use and, and, and work together even though we're apart. So uh, I think the timing of this is even more auspicious because of that. So um, welcome everybody and thank you Roger for putting this on. I will also just briefly mention and, and introduce Matt Bonner is on our screen. Uh, Matt is just started with the Land Trust today and uh, this is one of the projects I wanted to have him work on as a uh, main, main community, a main conservation corps member this summer was to build programs for the land trust like this. Uh, so I, I said, Matt, you have to attend Roger's workshop tonight so we can get him started with that. Uh, Kathy Young, our development director here, is here as well. But um, uh, without a whole lot of further ado, thank you very much, Roger, for doing this. Uh, I will last, uh, just end by saying all of the land trust preserves are still open. Uh, we have never had more visitors than the last few months. Uh, people are getting out on the trails, and that's a good thing. It's really nice to see people finding some solace in being able to, you know, take a walk with a friend or with a family member. So please keep doing that. Please be safe as you do it. But um, we're really glad to see our land serve that role. So uh, thanks so much for coming. And Roger, listen, I'm excited to hear what you have to say. All right, thank you. So and I'd like to thank the Camden Public Library. It's one of our wonderful community organizations. And Coastal Land, Mountains Land Trust has given me so much joy over the past 10 years that I've lived here. Uh, if you live in Midcoast, Maine and are not a member, you can join for any amount of money. Uh, and it's worth becoming a member, getting on their news list, uh, and, and learning about the many preserves they have. So tonight I'll be talking about iNaturalist and now I want to share my screen and so hopefully you can all see a pitcher plant. Yes. Okay. Excellent. So I put iNaturalist on my iPhone and the first thing I'm going to show you uh, is a picture of my iPhone uh, and let me go on. Um, so this was the only way I could do it but if you happen to have uh, the app, the iNaturalist app on your iPhone, you can do exactly what I'm doing now. Uh, and if you have something to take a photo of, um, then you can actually do everything right now. So the first thing I do, I've got this iNaturalist app where my pointer is. And if I click on that, the next screen that comes up, uh, this is me, it knows it, it's me. Um, and I, I imagine some of you would have to sign in, but I, for some reason, it doesn't ask me to sign in every time. Uh, I've posted over 6,700 uh, uh, photos to iNaturalist. But if we go down to the bottom, if you go down to this observe button on your phone and click on that, it, uh, as long as it has permission to access your camera, uh, you can take a picture. And so make believe that I'm taking a picture of this a beautiful flower in our yard and um, I've taken the picture and it says you can retake it or if you like the picture uh, then you can hit the next button and this comes up well, what did you see and it tells you where you were what time the address which is my home um, and then has some things about it if you wanted to be uh, to not have uh, the location of it known to the public, then you'd hit the geoprivacy uh, app part of it and say, I want it private. Uh, if it's a captive plant, something's cultivated, which this one was, I would then switch to it from no to yes. Um, and you can ignore the projects. 
Uh, but if I click now on, I'm um, using my pointer, what did you see? It'll say, oh, I think this is a lilac. And even better down here, it says, uh, it's a common lilac, Syringa vulgaris. Okay, and then someone has seen it nearby. And if I click on that, it now puts common lilac up here. And so you've been able to identify this as a common lilac or any other plant. And if you've got had a, a, a leaf or something that was on, and you're doing this with me, um, it'll tell you whatever you've got, hopefully. Now, if you want to stop there, just hit cancel. But if you want to upload it to the iNaturalist app, and we'll go through this in more detail, you hit the share button, it then uploads to the website and becomes a, a semi-permanent. You can always delete it. Um, it's not like Facebook where things are hard to delete. Um, it's easy to delete anything you put up there. Uh, so that's about as much as you want to do. Oh, I want to say one other thing about doing it on your, uh, sharing something on your smartphone. If you don't have a good internet connection, it takes a long time to upload. Uh, so uh, if you're in the, the field, um, I would just say uh, cancel and then uh, on your computer later, uh, move that photo from your smartphone onto your computer. And, uh, or you could do it uh, 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 at home on your smartphone even. Okay, so I'm gonna get out of this presentation. And now I'm gonna click on iNaturalist, which I have here in the upper left. And now we're going to the website. And it says I'm screen sharing. There we go. So I'm just waiting for it to load. It's loading a little bit slowly because usually it's, it's much faster than this. Okay. So Julia, is there a, yeah, there is a way for me to get rid of everybody's pictures. Okay. Now, what this shows you here on my computer um, is my iNaturalist homepage. And so I'll go over this um, uh, a bit. Um, and, and before I actually do, I want to say a few things about iNaturalist. Uh, it is incredible. Uh, it'll identify most anything you can show it, even you know, things like mosses and lichens, as long as it has enough photographs. It, it uses artificial intelligence uh, based on the photos that have already been confirmed as uh, as uh, at least two people agree uh, that that's exactly what, what it is. And uh, it probably takes 100 or so photos for an individual species before it gets really good. But if I go to this explore button, just to show you something, we'll come back to here later. Um, what you can see here is over nine, 39 million observations have been uploaded to iNaturalists that cover almost 280,000 species. Uh, there's over 135,000 people who have uh, uh, identified uh, uh, these, and over a million people have confirmed those identifications, and, and we'll talk about that in, in, a, in a minute. Uh, so that just gives you an idea of just how powerful this is. And I want to show you one other thing. Going back um, to my own page, I'm just going to go hit the back button. Again, to talk about just how powerful this is. Um, I do a lot of traveling and go to neat places. I was in Ecuador and took a picture of a flatworm. So I'm going to show you this. Here's the flatworm I want to show you. It should come up on the screen. There we go. Okay. So I uploaded this and said, um, I did some research and said, okay, this is a flatworm and it was on land. Uh, it's a really neat thing. This thing was at night and it was moving along through the leaves. Uh, and then I said, okay, I'm in the tropics, so it's a neotropical uh, uh, planarian, which is a flatworm. Okay, and that's the best I could do. And this guy, Lee Windsor, said it's the genus Pseudogeoplana because there's multiple haloed eyes along the margin. 
Well, I looked at this thing and said, okay, here's the margin. I don't see any haloed eyes. Uh, I'm gonna question this guy about his, his wisdom. Um, and I said, so I, I messaged him uh, by hitting a comment button. And I, I said, thanks. I must admit that I don't see the haloed eyes that are so readily visible in another flatworm I posted and I gave him a link to that. And he responds, yes, the eyes are not nearly as conspicuous as the other species, but they are there. So I said, well, who is this guy? And I click on his name. And this is Lee Windsor. He doesn't know I'm, I'm talking about him. He said, a national and international authority on the identification and classification of terrestrial land planarians, of which I have worked for some 47 years. So here I am, a, a hick naturalist, um, very much an amateur talking with the world's expert on, on flatworms, on terrestrial flatworms. And that just shows you the power of iNaturalist and how readily available some of the world's experts are uh, on, on, on using this app. Um, so that brings up two points. One is this should be taken seriously. Anybody can use it, but don't post pictures of your, your spouse or your dog or your cat an eye naturalist. Um, it it uh, may just go into oblivion, but some people get ticked off because there are a lot of really good naturalists that identify things for people. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is go back again to my home page, and now I'm going to show you how to upload things on your computer. So I've got something that's blocking. Okay, oh, so the first thing you have to do, it knows it's me, but I haven't logged in. So I hit the button, log in, or if you're a new person, you sign up um, and I have dash lane that automatically logs me in. Okay, so this is again what you've seen of all the people. Um, but if I go to my observations here, it just takes me up here on the top to my home page on iNaturalist again. Okay, you don't have to be on the home page. Um, but if you hit the upload button, and I have to shrink this down now, um, right here, it'll say, drag or drop some photos or sounds, because it'll also do sounds. Um, and actually, I'm gonna move this here, and I, I've gotten two images of birds uh, on my desktop, and I'm gonna drag them in, in here. Okay. Um, these are birds that I took in 2000, pictures of in 2010 in Anza Borrega State Park in uh, Southern California. And I had already, tagged where I, uh, in the metadata of these pictures, where I took the picture. And I naturalist read that and said Anza Borrego in my, uh, in my tags. And you actually can see that my tags here, I had put Anza Borrego and California. And it said, okay, Anza Borrego's in San Diego County. So we're gonna fill in this, where this location. Uh, so it did that automatically. Now I'll go back to the details. So now I wanna know what the species is. So I click on the species button and it's gonna load suggestions. And it says, we're pretty sure it's in the genus, uh, whatever that is, Amphispiza. And we think it's a black-throated sparrow, which I happen to know it is. And okay, I'll click on that and it'll load black-throated sparrow. And we'll do this one. And it'll say, Costas hummingbird is it's and that happens to be what it is. But what I'm going to show you now, if you hit this view button, uh, in other words, the, the previous one, I just clicked on the species, the black throated sparrow, but here I'm going to click on the view button. And now I can go back to the big screen here and it shows Costas hummingbird and here's an example. And you, you could say, well, I don't particularly like that picture, or I'm not sure that's the best picture. So you can click this view more button down here. 
and it will bring up every photo of a costed hummingbird. Whoever did it last uh, uh, took pictures of an albino costas. I don't know how they knew it was a costas if it was an albino. But you can scroll down and see all the different pictures, the different views, the males, the females, the immatures, although they don't, you have to actually click on something like this. Um, and you click on it, you can actually go to the individual image and it um, may or may not say if it's a male or female, often it doesn't. But anyhow, it gives you lots of pictures. Now Roger, I'm gonna go. Roger, yes. we had a quick question that's relevant. Um, they yeah. wanted to know if what you're showing us now are you able to do all of this on the phone version of the app no. too, or just the desktop? No, you can actually do it on the phone version, but the phone takes you to the website. And it, you know, it's been a little bit slow here. It'll be really slow on your iPhone. So, and, and I think it'll be limited as to what you can get. So this is best on your uh, laptop or uh, desktop, whatever you have. Um, uh, it's best to do it. Uh, not on your smartphone. The smartphone is mainly for saying, what is this? And, right. and leaving it at, at that. Now, so I'm going to go over the different things it tells you about Costa's hummingbird or any species. So the top observer is this guy. He's taken 67 photos and uploaded them of Costa's hummingbird. The top identifier. So when you post something on iNaturalist, uh, somebody else will confirm or, or correct what you've thought you posted um, or give a give you an example if you don't know at all what it is and say oh, it's a plant and they'll tell you what kind of plant it is so this Joshua Smith or whatever it is uh, he's identified for people 464 photos of, of Costa's hummingbirds uh, last observed on May 31st that was the last time it was uploaded and there's 2465 photos of Costa's hummingbird on the site Below that is when these photos were taken. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit difficult. You can do it, and I'm going to show you how. You say, well, if we look below at this map, here's all the photos of Costas Hummingbird, where they were. And, but if you say, OK, I want to know in California if they occur in the winter, we'll be able to do that, but not here. This just says any time. Most of them are taken in the spring. Okay, um, so if we go down further to this screen, um, here it's on map. So it shows you a map of all the Costas hummingbirds. Um, and uh, here's one outlier, and I happen to have clicked on that outlier in preparation, and it is a valid Costas hummingbird. It's been confirmed. Once something becomes confirmed by one person, it becomes, quote, research grade. Uh, now, unfortunately, sometimes uh, uh, a research grade is uh, somebody who really doesn't know what they're talking about, uh, but eventually that would get challenged. So for the most part, if something's research grade, it is valid as that species, and that indeed was. Okay, if you want to learn more about Costas hummingbirds, the About button here links to Wikipedia. Um, now, Wikipedia didn't have, oh yeah, you no, know, it has a whole lot on Costas hummingbirds, and you could read all about that. If you want to say, okay, what family is Costas hummingbird in, you go to this taxonomy, and it's an animal kingdom. Uh, it's uh, a vertebrate, you know, it's a bird in the class aves. Uh, all the way down to, uh, here's the family it is. Um, I can't quite read it on my screen. Uh, but right down to the species. Uh, so you can actually learn the taxonomy of a particular species. If you want to know it's endangered, you hit the status button. Um, it's not endangered uh, 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 globally, but there are places where it is. Um, and then if you want to say, okay, uh, is, is what else looks like a cost is maybe I, I have the wrong one or maybe I naturalist is wrong. Here's all the species that are commonly misidentified as Costa's hummingbirds. Uh, so I think already you're, you're seeing some of the incredible uh, power of, of this to actually help you in your identifications. And then when you're done with this, um, it opens this screen in a separate uh, a tab. So you can just X that out and then I'm back to this 
screen here. Now, let's say I have five different photos all taken in the same place. And here, uh, I, it says San Diego County, but I want to put Anza Borrego on there. So what I can do is click on, hold down the shift tab and click so I highlight both of these, and then go to this editing panel over here, and I can click over here. Uh, what I've done is clicked on the location, and it opens this box. And up top, it says search for a location. And I'm going to put Anza Borrego State Park right there. And so that I, it'll actually show uh, with a circle exactly where I took the picture. Or better yet, let's say, yeah, that was there, but I was actually over here. So I'm going to move it over here. Um, Anyhow, I'll move it back because I can't remember where I took these photos. But you can be quite precise or quite imprecise and increase the size of this. Okay. And it says, and, and I want it down here in the locality, I want it to say Anza Borrego so people know it's not just in San Diego County, but that's where I saw it. And then I click on update observation. But let's say I also want to, I have a whole bunch of photos. In it of Anza Borrego uh, wildlife, you can hit the pin button right over here in the lower right, and it will become a pin location. So I'll do that. Uh, pin this comment. I think I have to hit it again. Could not save location. This has already been taken. I already took. I, I already have an Anza Borrego pin among. There it is, right there. Um, so I could even hit that, and it will uh, give me that. And then. If I hit the update observation, now it says Anza Borrego down here. And then finally, if I want to put this on the website, I hit the share button, which I'm going to do. It's saving both observations. And now it's going to go back to my observations, a different screen. And now you see them here. Now, somebody asked, well, if you put something up by mistake or just want to delete it, um, can you do that? And the answer is yes. If you click on, on something, uh, oh, or hit this edit button here, and you can go down to the lower left here and hit the delete button, and it would delete it. Uh, it would ask you to confirm. I'm going to actually leave these up because I've never posted those two photos, and I might as well post them. Um, so now we'll head back. So this is one screen. Um, there's a different screen of my observations here. I'm going to take you back there. And that's really where we started. Uh, now, <laughs> if you're like me, you're already overwhelmed. There's just so much. And I would say sit back and enjoy this. You can explore this on your own later. Uh, you'll just know some of the great stuff that can be done. Roger, we did have a, a question that came in that sure. I thought was was pretty relevant. Um, so I wanted to ask, uh, you know, when you posted that picture of the flatworm, how did that gentleman know? Was he Would he have had to have been monitoring flatworm photos pretty regularly? Yes, okay. yes. And, and, and I'm going to go, I, I will get to that. Okay. Um, it, it's basically is the identify button up, up here. So I'm going to now go to this uh, third item here and you'll see. Um, uh, so this is a dog whelk. Uh, scuba diving is one of my hobbies. And I took this photo um, and uh, posted it. And because I, I, I'm really new at scuba diving around here um, in mid coast Maine. And it said it was, a, uh, I natural said it was an Atlantic dog whelk. And I looked at all the other photos and I said, yeah, I think it's, that's what it is. And so I uploaded it and, and as an Atlantic dog whelk. Okay, so T. French, um, who uh, went on the identification button that was up top, um, said he agrees, and we'll get to that. And okay, so now I've said that's what it is, somebody's agreed, and it's become research grade. Now, I can show you lots of mine 
where somebody said, yeah, you're right, that's what it is. And then somebody else who's smarter or more knowledgeable comes and said, no, you're both wrong. And sometimes it gets to be a, a great discussion. And I must say that I've never had anybody behave obnoxiously or abusively uh, on iNaturalist. Uh, people are always very polite, um, even when they disagree. Uh, and it's just been a, a wonderful experience. Um, so that's that. So um, I just want to go back to, yeah, let's see. Okay, so, but, all right. So this is a list of, of all my, um, uh, everything I've posted. If I go to the world, up here, it shows a map of all the places I've posted and the, the darker red uh, there is, then that's the, the more photos. And you can enlarge this by hitting this button. And if you put, I'm just gonna put Camden, Maine in the middle here, and we'll go further and further. You can see, you know, here's Camden, and you can go right down just to uh, a very small area. Um, and it will show you what photos you've taken in that area. If you click on one of the photos, as long as you get to a, uh, a uh, high enough resolution, like here's one in Portland, I clicked on it, it's loading, and I took a photograph of a brown knapweed, uh, and it just shows uh, that photo there, so you can see what you, you took a picture of. Uh, so I've posted 6,700 observations, 3,800 species, 908 people have helped identify and agree, or agreed or disagreed with what I've posted. And I, again, I can say that I have some major experts uh, in, in fields. Uh, one of my hobbies is, is butterfly photography. And I've had extensive conversations through INAP, uh, naturalists about butterflies I've, I've photographed in Ecuador uh, with real experts and it's been loads of fun. Okay, now uh, I'm gonna go up here to the explore button. And we've done a little of this already. So this is the worldwide, all the photos that have been taken on iNaturalist. And now, let's say we want to uh, explore a, a species. Um, and I'll just do narrow-leaved ragwort because that's the last thing that somebody's posted on here. I'll go narrow-leaved uh, uh, ragwort. Whoops, you have to spell it right. It doesn't guess what you're trying to do. Um, I could have, okay, and then you, I click on this button and say, yes, that's what I want. Okay, so then it brings up where narrow-leaved ragwort has been photographed, and most of it has been in Europe. So my guess is that narrow-leaved ragwort is uh, an exotic for the United States. Um, it may be invasive for all I know. If I wanted more information on narrow-leaved ragwort, I could just, uh, one of these and then hit this again and it will take you uh, and i'll actually do that to the screen that you've seen before now it tells you everything about narrow leaf ragwort where it is other photos uh, since we would put it on similar species uh, it, it that's where it is now somewhere well, it looks like this is a native because it would have a non-native exclamation point if it was non-native. Uh, so anyhow, you can do that on any, any particular species you want. So just go back now. And again, I realize I'm going through this fast and it would be really hard for you to remember everything, but I just want to give you a flavor of, of what can be done. So under that explore, you can also, so we've got narrow leaf ragworts, but let's say 
here, we want to filter it more. We just don't want worldwide narrow leaf ragworts. We want to know if it exists in Maine. Uh, actually, for that one, we could just go location, Maine, Maine, USA. Okay. And there we see there are zero observations. It doesn't exist in Maine. If you thought that's what you had, uh, then you were wrong. Um, but you can actually change this. And how do we do this? Um, no. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have to go back. Okay. Whoops, I got out of everything. So anyhow, let's do something else now because there's, there's several things I want to show you on this explore function. Um, let's see, uh, how about, I'm just thinking this off the top of my head, musk turtle, because we have those around here. American musk and musk turtles, or musk turtles one specifically. And uh, common musk turtle, oh, it's actually, okay. I forgot, it's only doing my own pictures. So we're gonna go back to explore up here, go to the species, put in musk turtle right here. And we're gonna go back to Maine here. Okay. And if I hit this button up here, I think this is the one. No, it's not doing anything. Okay. We're going to go to filters next over here. And now if I want to be more specific about it, um, let's say, uh, yeah, here's musk turtles in Maine, but I only want ones in the last year. I could put the, the dates or the range of dates or the months. Have they ever been seen in the winter? Probably not. But if we go let's say April, May, and June, we'll hit that, and then update search. We'll see, yeah, it has been seen. So they come out pretty early, and there's been a few seen uh, in those months. And you can do any of these filters um, you want. If you wanted to look at Maine and say, I want to see all the birds that have ever been photographed in Maine, you could do that. You could do it for Camden, Maine. You could do it for anywhere you wanted. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, we'll just go across here. We'll go back to my observations. This just gets you back to that home page. And then I'm going to go on. Um, so if you wanted to search and say, oh, have I ever photographed um, a particular species? Um, you could actually search on your own species here uh, under your observations. If you want to know somebody else, okay, so here's the people of iNaturalists. And let's say uh, I'm just going to give you an example. I'm going to type in Keith Wilmot. He's my favorite butterfly expert. And search for his stuff. And uh, I didn't. Okay, K. Wilmot, this is it, yeah. So, so this just shows him. If you go into the community, you can look for anybody and it just tells you who he is. Um, he really likes neotropical butterflies, especially those of Ecuador. He's taught me so much, um, things I've mistaken, he's corrected, a very nice guy. I've never met him, it's only through iNaturalist. Okay, now the identify button. So let's say you have a particular area of interest. You are interested in butterflies of Maine. Um, you can go to species and just type in butterflies. Uh, you can do butterflies and moth. Let's just do butterflies of Maine. And you could say um, you want to, um, Let's go, okay. Not sure why it got out of Maine. Hold on. Maine, USA. Okay. Um, it show all the butterflies of Maine. Um, 
if you want to do ones that have just been reviewed, it needs to be reviewed. You could, in other words, if you're somebody who wants to review new butterflies or, um, and actually what I'll show you, um, okay, here's a Canadian tiger swallowtail. If you say, okay, I want to hit that one. Do I agree that that's a Canadian tiger swallowtail? So Kitty Doc 2 suggested that's what it was. If you know butterflies well in Maine and you agree with it, you can say, I agree and hit that right there. And that's what it is. And I know that's what it is. So I'm gonna put, I agree. Okay. And Roger Rittmaster suggested that indeed it was a Canadian tiger swallowtail. I could put a comment saying why I think it is. Um, I, if I disagreed, I could add a different ID to it. Um, I should probably shouldn't even post this without the other view, um, but that's fine. Um, uh, uh, that was just something that that, that person put in there. Um, but anyhow, I agreed with it. So then it becomes research grade up here. So it just shows you how if you post something, somebody looks at it, says yes, that's what it is, is now research grade. So we'll take that out. And uh, so again, we got to that under the identify button. And you can look for anything you want uh, under this uh, if you want to be the person to actually identify it. And now it says it's reviewed by me. Okay, uh, let's go back. And I'm just trying to see if there's anything else. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my observations. Okay, yes, the, there's a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> okay, so if you go under this more button up top, there are video tutorials on iNaturalist. Uh, projects is something, if, if you were somebody who had a real interest, say in amphibians of Maine, well, there already is an uh, amphibians of Maine project. Um, it means you'll start collecting all the amphibians that have been posted in, in Maine under one, heading. Uh, I wouldn't advise doing this unless you, you really are interested in it and want to make this an active project because it takes a lot of maintenance to do that. But there's a teacher's guide. So if you're a teacher, um, there's just some info. I'll bring this up uh, and it gives you how to do that. Uh, it gives you some advice, uh, some do's and don'ts, um, especially uh, when you get students involved who might take pictures of anything. Um, just a, a word of caution. And somebody asked right at the beginning, and I didn't get to it, um, seek by iNaturalist. It's the same thing, but it, it allows people to identify things, but not post them. So it's great for kids if you want them to identify things, but you don't want them posting a lot of junk on iNaturalist. Uh, if you use seek, uh, it'll do all the identification stuff without actually being able to post anything. And so this is a whole teacher's guide. So if you go up on the, so here's an image of me. Um, so the first thing I, I can go is to my dashboard. Okay. So I'm following several people, people who I know and, and uh, who I'm interested in. Um, my wife is Jeannie Hutchins. She posted these two. Uh, as unknowns, uh, and uh, so I can see that, and I can see other people have posted things. If I want to just look at what people have said about for me, I can put my own content here, and it's loading that. So here's a good one. So I took a picture of this, uh, it's called a hair streak. Um, and it was in Belize, and that was uh, 2010. And someone finally took a look at it. And this just happened. So I haven't seen this yet. Activity, um, I said I thought it was uh, this butterfly. I'd done some research. Uh, John Shui agreed, and it became uh, uh, research. Um, but this guy said, no, you're wrong. OK, I'm just looking at this right now. And I've got to go back, uh, but he said it looks the same as this one, 
and so I'll have to go look at that. But that just, so this is something that just happened on one of my photographs. And what I normally would do would say, okay, who is this person? So I'll click on them. How good a, okay, this is not a very, uh, this, is, this is not what you want to post if you want to be an expert on iNaturalist. Uh, so he might know what he's talking about, but this wouldn't convince me uh, of that. That's really interesting. Okay. Poor guy, he doesn't know that he's just been uh, vetted by uh, 80 different people. Okay, so uh, that's my dashboard. And it has, so it has everybody I'm following and it has my own observations. If you wanna edit an observation, you click here. Um, things I've identified, I click here. I don't do a lot of identifications because I don't consider myself an expert. Um, you can, tag something as a favorite and it'll be stored here. The next thing I wanna to go to is the profile. So this is what I put for myself. I uploaded a photo of myself um, and said, I am a retired endocrinologist living in Camden, Maine. Uh, I consider myself a very amateur naturalist and I spent a lot of time on land conservation and environmental issues. So it just tells people a little about me. Um, if I disagree with somebody, they'll say, well, this guy really doesn't know what he's talking about. But anyhow, uh, you can put whatever you, and if you have a special interest, it's good to put that in there so somebody can see, yeah, um, if you make a comment on somebody else's photo, yeah, you probably really know what you're talking about. Okay, so go back. Um, account settings here. Uh, I'm not sure that actually worked. But again, account settings. Okay, so what this goes to is here's my name, here's my email. This is the name that appears. You can make any name you want if you don't want to be known. Um, where I'm located, what language I speak. Uh, and so all this can be changed. Uh, email settings, receive email notification. If anybody comments, I want to know about it. Um, and you can click or unclick all of this. Uh, depending on, on what you want to get for emails. Uh, basically, every day I check my, um, my dashboard uh, to see if anybody's commented on any of the 6,700 photos that I posted. And usually every day somebody has commented on something because I have so many on here. Um, taxonomy settings. Okay, iNaturalist keeps up on name changes of scientific names of everything. So the moment it gets notified, it tells me if, um, if it changes the official name, the scientific name of a species, it will notify me of that. And so I can update my photos with the latest taxonomic uh, classification of a species. Uh, so that's really good. Things are changing all the time with DNA analysis of species. Things are being reorganized all the time. I always tell people, you should use common names because they don't change. The scientific names are changing all the time. Of course, that, that's tongue in cheek um, uh, because there's lots of common names for a, an individual species and lots of common names uh, are used for different species. Um, uh, and you can actually say, okay, uh, accept community identifications. Um, what else do I want to show here? Um, You can change, so I have it listing the taxonomical species first, um, but you can have it uh, show the scientific name first right here. If I clicked on that, instead of showing the common name first for anything I post, it would show the scientific name first. And actually, I unclicked this for this presentation so you can see the common names, but I'm going to click it again to go back to the scientific names first because I want to learn those. And in terms of licensing, uh, you can, I've never messed with this, but you can uh, say how your pictures can be licensed, uh, whether anybody can use them or not use them. And I'm happy for anybody to use anything I post for whatever. Uh, uh, I don't know what all this stuff is. Uh, but they're, they're different groups. And I hit save at the bottom to change that for scientific name first. 
All right. Wow. This is a lot of stuff. I think I've gone over the main things with iNaturalist. I'm going to stop here. Uh, we have about 12 more minutes and uh, entertain any questions you've had, anything you didn't understand and want me to go back and, and show again, uh, anything at all, just uh, raise your hand or put something in the chat box. Uh, yeah, chat box is probably the easiest way to do it since we do still have so many people here. Um, so we have a, a question that was, if you are using your smartphone in the field and are not connected with Wi-Fi, will the information automatically upload once you connect to the internet? I do not believe so, but that photo will get stored in your photo gallery um, so you can access that photo again. Uh, either transfer it to a computer. There's probably a way, um, and I haven't actually done this, but the uh, iNaturalist, it can access your photos. So when you get to a, a web place, a place that has connectivity, uh, it, it probably can identify that for you. I, I just haven't done it, so I don't know how to do it. Okay. Uh, and related to the phone, actually, we have um, uh, Jean mentioned that she found out that if you click on the arrow on the right of a photo, um, you get a button that says more info on iNaturalist.org um, and then you get to all of the information on the website. So if you're using the app, I, I think is yeah. what this person is referring to on your phone, um, it, it will send you over to the website as you had described. Yes, I, and I forgot to, to mention that. Yes, yeah, so the app that's on your phone actually is very elemental in terms of what it can do. It identifies things and anything more goes to the website just as we're doing here modified for a smartphone. Um, so yes, you can do all that on your iPhone. It's just much easier on your own computer. Yeah, it seems from my, my experience with it prior to the program, it, it definitely seems like it's very easy to check um, the identification and then also very easy to share it from the phone, but to deep dive into this information you've described much better on a, on a desktop or a laptop or some, some larger computer. <laughs> Um, Kathy asks, what does needs ID mean? Does someone else do that for you? Um, yeah, so what it means is that uh, you've posted something and you've, you've put some identification. Sometimes I see people don't even try, they just say something <laughs> uh, or, or don't put an ID down. Um, but let's say you, you took a picture of a, uh, a robin and, and uh, uh, so the needs ID means somebody needs to confirm that uh, that it is indeed a Robin for it to become quote research grade. Hmm. I'm pretty sure that's what that means. Okay. Um, someone else also asked, how do you know the first suggestion is correct, especially with plants? Um, or with animals? No, it may it, it could be totally wrong. Um, so. Uh, if it's a total unknown, I mean, then what I do is I click on the view button uh, to the right of the suggestion and then go to that screen that tells all about that particular species. And I look at a little bunch of photos and compare it to what I took a picture of. And again, that's why it's so good to be on a computer because you can actually have your picture in, in one uh, screen uh, uh, or window, I should say, and then use iNaturalist and look at the other photos and compare them and say, well, are those markings the same or are they different? Do I really think that uh, that's correct? Um, and sometimes, especially with tropical butterflies, I've got to do a lot of research to figure out if iNaturalist is correct or if there's uh, something else. But if I misidentify something, if it's from Ecuador, I can be sure that Keith Wilmot will be on the, uh, uh, on the web within a couple of days to tell me uh, what I misidentified. Yeah, I, th I think you and I had joked a little bit about, um, you know, what about if people were using this for mushrooming? That <laughs> oh, yeah. you'd want to, you'd want to really make sure that you were. Um, oh, for sure. <laughs> getting, for, getting it identified correctly. <laughs> for for sure, um, I, I have identified mushrooms with it. Now, for a mushroom, um, often just showing one view is, is not a, a adequate, but sometimes it is, and it, if I'm if you have a typical picture of a mushroom, and it's a good photo, uh, there's enough mushrooms on, on an iNaturalist that will identify it for you. It's just that some look very similar, so it can misidentify it as well. Yep. 
Um, Kaysen posted that he just had someone identify one of his observations during this program. So you can see how quickly that happens. Yeah, so I looked up one person who had identified something and, and I thought that he, uh, I wanted to know uh, how um, likely it was that he was correct and because he challenged one of my identifications. And it turns out he had over 100,000 identifications. Well, what that tells me is that he is just going on the web trying to identify anything to get his numbers up high because nobody in their right mind would have 100,000 identifications. It means you're on the web all the time just identifying things. So it made me suspicious. Now, he might have been correct. I may have been wrong. That's perfectly possible. But I didn't have a lot of confidence when I saw that he had 100,000 identifications uh, uh, under his name. So someone else is asking, Anne is asking, what about things like sunsets, sunrises, rainbows, and uh, night celestial photos? Uh, does it do that. <laughs> I don't know about night, you know, the constellations, if it would do constellations. Uh, but uh, again, this is to identify species. Um, yeah, you can post anything on iNaturalist. And that's why I want to emphasize, take this seriously. Um, because there are very serious and knowledgeable people who will help you uh, if they see you as, as, as credible and trying to learn. Um, if they see you posting rainbows, uh, yeah, then uh, they, they, they can, I think you can actually blacklist people somehow on this thing. I don't want to see anything from this person. Um, Barbara asks if you can identify bird sounds with it. Um, yes, uh, you can. Now, I don't know how good that is because the, the problem with trying to upload uh, audio is the quality of the audio that you take. So if you have a good audio system, uh, which tends to be expensive, um, but uh, um, some people have them, yeah, um, it, it will identify if, if other people have posted and identified the same thing. And, and bird songs are, are one thing that I would imagine are pretty good. The, the trouble is I don't have anything that, that can actually capture bird songs very well. My iPhone doesn't do it uh, good enough. Okay, someone mentions also that, uh, I guess in regards to the constellations, that you can use the Puniverse um, app or the Pocket Universe app for constellations. Cool, all right. Very neat. We'll have to do a program on that someday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a couple more minutes. Is there anyone else who has a question? You can go ahead and type it into the uh, chat box. You can click on the little chat icon and that should bring up the white box next to you and you can go ahead and chat, type something in for Roger to answer. Um, oh, someone just posted that they use Song Sleuth for bird songs. It creates a spectrogram and suggests an ID. Very cool. Great, yeah, great. And I said, you know, iNaturalist might do it well. I, I don't know because I never posted an audio clip. I think I'd struggle with finding just one bird song. I usually have about 12 going all at the same time in my house. Yeah, exactly. That's going to be one of them. And oh, well, one thing I didn't mention, which is really important and is, is, is obvious, uh, the quality of iNaturalist depends on the quality of your photo. So what you want is to have uh, enough of the photo uh, occupied by the species you're interested in so it knows what to look for it knows what you're trying to identify um, you want it distinct from the background uh, it's got to find the outline of what you want to identify it can't be blurred uh, otherwise it can't uh, it won't have the right outlines having said that it is remarkable in some of the stuff it can do. And I'm just going to see if I can scroll down. It's going to take too long to find it. I took a picture of a sand shrimp underwater. Sand shrimps are little tiny shrimps that look just like the sand that they live on. And it identified it uh, immediately for me and told me exactly what it was. So it is pretty incredible, but the quality of the photo is important. Um, Gretchen asks, if uh, Coastal Mountains Land Trust has a group for their trail identification. I'm not sure what the question. Yeah, I'm not clear on that. Um, um, it looks like Kathy has written, uh, Coastal Mountains is planning to begin getting a catalog for each preserve slash trail watch for news later. So thank you, Kathy, for addressing that question. 
Um, and I think you, this is a good, a good one last big question. What is the most amazing species find for Maine using iNaturalist? Do you know of anything really incredible that was found here? Um, I, I don't, I can say that uh, the reason I thought of musk turtle is because when I posted that, um, uh, the guy who has a project for amphibians of Maine got really excited, uh, wanted to know exactly where it was that I had found it. Um, that also happened with a salamander um, that Gary Galasian and I saw. Um, he wanted to know exactly where that was. Um, uh, for this this project. So there are people very interested in, in what's been found. And I'm sure there's a lot of rare stuff that's been found that I just can't think of right off the top of my head, uh, pick one out. Well, it is certainly a lot of fun uh, to mess around on the app. Just, I myself was excited. I live right near Mary Spring and I used the option where you could look at, at what was found in that area on the map and um, it was very, very cool to, to have such quick access to that. So thank you, Roger, for giving us a, um, a, a crash course in iNaturalist. And um, I definitely encourage folks to rewatch this if you have any questions. Um, Roger did a great job covering the basics. And I think that that section you pointed out with the tutorials would be very helpful too um, for people to go ahead and take a look at. Uh, so thank you. Um, Abe, I encourage everyone, if you have a moment, oh, look, we're getting all sorts of nice uh, thank yous in the chat box here um, from the fan club. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> I encourage everyone to please visit librarycamden.org and our calendar on that page to see some of the other upcoming programs we have. We've got a lot of great things coming up. Um, and I thank everyone for joining us this evening. So, all right. Bye-bye. Have a good one. Thanks, Julia. You did a great job of monitoring everything. You too, Roger. Master ceremonies. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.